All right, guys. So I was scrolling through Amazon, as I do, and I'm sure that's a giant shocker to a lot of you. And I was scrolling through the Amazon Basics section of the website, and I've done uh, Amazon Basics. I think we did just office supplies before. So today we're kind of like finishing up the Amazon Basics, and I kind of just picked a bunch of random stuff. We're going to test it. So first thing is the Amazon Basics water filter cartridges. Now, they say they fit a Brita filter. Uh, I'm assuming that they're made specifically for Brita filters. Some uh, Our control, which is just regular tap water. We'll use our TDS meter. And we'll see how good these filters are. My regular tap water coming in at 63. I don't know if that's good or bad. Good thing I don't drink tap water. And then inside of this, I already have a Brita filter. We'll just run it first. That should be enough, I would imagine. These filters feel like they take forever. I feel like that should be enough. Oh, perfect. Okay, so that's Brita. I won't test that yet because I don't want to ruin anything. So now these Amazon filters. It's like loose. I assume it's charcoal, but it looks like just dirt. I don't think the Brita ones, I mean, this is all wet now, but when they're new, I don't think they are like sandy like this. So let's see what this does. I'm curious, I think that the charcoal is going to get washed into the water, I would assume. It seems to be filtering the water faster, which might not be a good thing. Yeah, that seems way faster. I bet this is already almost the whole cup's worth. Yeah, that, that was like, that took a couple seconds Whereas the Brita one took like a couple minutes. So we started at 63. Brita brought us to... Brita is now at 96. How does that work? How does the filter cause more stuff to be in there? And <laughs> the Amazon filter is at uh, 65. What does this even mean? Oh, the tap water now says... Am I getting different readings? 67 is what the tap water was. Was it 67 before or am I crazy? I thought it was 63. Anyway, 67. I think my meter's messed up, to be honest. <laughs> Cause now this says 101. And now this says 69. I mean, they're all still roughly within two or three of what the first of what the first readings were. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Without sending it, sending it like off to a lab or something, I guess we'll never really know how filtered it is. I can taste it all and I can let you know. So we'll go tap water first. Tastes like uh, chemicals. This is, this is Brita. It has like a cleaner, like a, like a cleaner taste to it, which is odd. Yeah, the Amazon one literally tastes exactly like the tap water. The, the Brita tastes like it's missing something that these two have. And I'm assuming what it's missing is like the chemicals. I do have one other way <laughs> that we can test it that I think will be fun. So before we go any farther, the sponsor of today's video is AirUp. If you don't know, AirUp is a water bottle that flavors your water through scent. So I have the Triton bottle here. I'm gonna show you how it works. Step one, obviously, fill your bottle up with water. Step two, pick a flavor. We are going with watermelon. And then step three, all you gotta do is open your pod and then you put your pod on here. Just so you know, there are two modes, if you wanna call them that, to these water bottles. You can push the pod all the way down and it's just regular water, no flavor. Or to activate the pod, you just pull it up slightly and then whenever you drink to it, you'll be able to hear it. And then your water is flavored. So that's how AirUp works. It's very simple and easy to use. And if you're interested and you want to get yourself one, all of the links will be in the description. So there's one way that I thought of that 
short of sending the water off to a lab, that we can see what uh, how well the Amazon filter is pulling like the contaminants and stuff out of the out of the water. We'll filter something that isn't water, like Mountain Dew. I put the Brita filter back in here, and we'll just filter some Mountain Dew through both of them, and uh, that should tell us how well it pulls things out of the water. That's not, of course, super scientific, but I think it'll work for our purposes. So let's put some dew in here. That's actually probably a little bit too much. Also, I won't forget a control so we can compare the color. So I put that there. So far, it seems to be coming out clear, but the first little bit of that could just be the water the residual water getting flushed out. And notice that it is taking quite a while to work its way through the filter. All right, now let's see. I mean, that's, it's pretty clear. So it smells like Mountain Dew. I'm curious if this one is gonna be really fast like it was with the water. I'm also, before I even do this, I'm gonna make a prediction. I don't think that it's gonna going to do much. I, like, I don't think it's gonna be nearly this clear. That's just my prediction. Oh, so far it looks like I'm probably wrong. Unless that's just the water coming through. And it does look like it's taking longer to filter than the water. Okay, it looks like, after I went through, it looks like I actually wasn't that far off. I thought I was gonna be wrong for a minute, but not really. We have our control, <laughs> Amazon, and then Brita. You can tell that the uh, Amazon filter is not doing as, is not pulling as much stuff out as the Brita. But I'll give it a taste test. I'll start with the Brita. The Brita actually, the Brita actually left a lot of stuff in there. If you guys saw my last video, I, I did, I put a bunch of liquids through a water filter, but it was a zero water filter, not a Brita. And the zero water filter took out a lot more than what this took out. This still tastes very Mountain Dewy, even though it's clear. And I can taste a lot of sugar and actually like quite a bit of flavor. It just feels like it maybe cut the flavor by like 40% maybe, Amazon. It tastes like like Mountain Dew light, if there if that was such a thing. Because it still tastes very Mountain Dewy. I can taste a lot more flavor in this than I can this. I can tell there's more sugar in this than this, I believe. The Amazon filter, I just don't feel like it's really doing that much, to be honest. I'm going to assume that it's just charcoal and that's it. I mean, maybe I'm completely wrong because I don't know anything about water filtration. Uh, but... It just feels like maybe charcoal alone is not enough. Maybe there should be some, some other stuff in there, like whatever the Brita has in there. So I would not recommend the Amazon water filters. <laughs> Our next product. I don't even know why I bought this, to be honest. It was like four in the morning and it was just said Amazon basics and I bought it. This is gonna be literally the quickest test of a product probably in the history of my channel. It's a squeegee. It just says Amazon basics on it. Let's see if it works. All right, so for this, we'll use the car windshield. Look at that. Oh, imagine that. It works. Actually pretty good. That was one of the most complex tests I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Obviously, it's a squeegee. It's really hard to mess up. It's just rubber and it just works. It's actually pretty nice. Next thing we are testing. I'm sure a lot of you probably remember these fans. We're testing the Amazon Basics high capacity rechargeable AA batteries. Now, I did a video about this time last year where I tested a bunch of different AA battery brands, but none of them were rechargeable. They were just conventional batteries. And inside of this fan, the batteries that lasted the longest were the Thunderbolt Edge, and they ran seven hours and 47 minutes in this fan. That's gonna be kind of like, not our baseline, but I guess what we're comparing to. We're hoping that we can get longer than that. But nonetheless, we'll figure out uh, where these batteries fall in that on that chart. So I have my little stopwatch here. 
three, two, one. I'll have to stick this somewhere where it can, where it can spin and not fall over. All right, I guess I'll see you in probably seven hours. All right, so I was gonna, I wanted to catch the fan dying on camera, but I, I missed it just by like a, a couple minutes. The Amazon batteries, <laughs> this is pathetic. They died at four hours, 19 minutes, and 53 seconds. Now, if you go back and watch the video where I did my big battery test, and those batteries weren't even rechargeable, uh, that makes them the third worst batteries that I've tested. And what makes it even worse than that is these batteries right on them say high capacity. That would make me believe that they have more capacity than your standard AA battery. When in reality, it's not even close. Now, granted, they are rechargeable, so you could just, they last half as long, but you could just throw them in the charger and you're ready to go again. But I still feel like that, uh, that lifespan is very pathetic. Next up, we have an Amazon Basics Whetstone Sharpening Kit. Don't need those. Looks like a very classic, uh, I don't think we need that either. Looks like a very classic whetstone kit that I think I've showed before. Or something that just makes a bunch of these and then a lot of people just put their names on it. But if it's like the other one, it probably won't be that bad. So it looks like we have a coarse 400 grit. Jeez. <laughs> 400 grit and then a thousand grit on top. That should be more than enough to get uh, a knife very sharp. First thing we gotta do is soak this in water. Cause I've had a couple of these before. I don't know if I still have them or not, but these like two, uh, two stone deals. When you put these in water, it seems like the two stones always separate from each other. And I don't know why. So we'll just let that kind of soak in some water. And now we'll test our test subject, which is just a kitchen knife that I think I used in another video and it, uh, I don't remember what I did to it, but it got pretty dull. Let's see where we're at. Oh, jeez. We're almost to a thousand. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. 1,545. Which, if I recall right, I'm pretty sure that's right around butter knife territory. So, our wet stones have soaked for a while. I think they are now fully saturated. So far, they haven't separated, which is actually pretty nice. Almost every set of this, like I said, has separated. So we're obviously gonna start on the 400 grit side since we're in butter knife territory. And we're just gonna go through the motions. The last part that a lot of you yelled at me for last time I sharpened a knife, you guys are very mean sometimes, we have to strop it. You guys made it very clear that you have to strop your knives. Here's a use for the squeegee. Now, and apparently this like, I don't know, removes the burrs or something. Now let's see what the sharpness tester has to say. I think anything under 300 is an extreme win. One eighty. I did not think I was I was gonna be able to get it that sharp. That's actually kind of crazy, especially whenever you consider the fact that I am a very 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 amateur knife sharpener. Those stones work uh, work very good. And if you are someone who uh, really, really, really knows what you're doing, I would bet you could even get results way better than that. So that's uh, pretty good. All right, next up, we're gonna be testing Amazon toilet paper. We're gonna see how strong it is. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, Amazon bath tissue, pardon me. I thought it was just toilet paper. So we're gonna be comparing uh, that to toilet paper, just regular toilet paper. This is Cottonelle. Um, we'll see how strong it is, and we'll see uh, see how it stacks up. If I remember right, it was pretty cheap. If 
far as price goes, and man, does it feel cheap. Let's just pull off two sheets of this. Okay, let's pull off two sheets of this. Okay, so this is standard toilet paper. Two sheets. You can kind of see, kind of see the amount of like flop there. And this is the Amazon. <laughs> That's pathetic. That's like nothing. This is like kind of thick and actually has something to it. This is just like literally paper. I mean, this seems like a seems like an accident waiting to happen. And that's the type of accident you don't want to have happen. What we're going to do is I have a spray bottle and we're going to put we're going to suspend a piece of toilet paper between this like little rig that I set up. We're going to spray it five times with toilet, with water and then I'm going to stack dimes on top of it until it breaks through. And we'll see which one's the strongest. Let's go ahead and do Amazon first. And by the way, these are uh, both two ply. I just think that the Amazon, <laughs> I think two of their plies is probably as thick as one of the two plies of probably just about every other toilet paper. All right, now five sprays of water. That is already not looking good. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 36. I won't be completely honest with you. That is, uh, that's way more than I thought it was gonna hold. That just seemed like so much. So if that held 36, I feel like the other stuff is gonna do way more. All right, one thing I can tell is that it feels, feels much stronger. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's not sagging nearly as much. I might not even have enough diamonds for all this. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, five, twenty six, twenty seven. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. I dropped that one a little too hard. 35, but I dropped that one. I think we gotta redo that. 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 30, 31. Does that mean the Amazon toilet paper is stronger than this? That doesn't make any sense. Look how flimsy it is compared to this. This is like pretty stiff. Does the floppiness not equal out to the strength of it? Or am I just crazy? I guess the Amazon toilet paper is just as strong if not a little bit stronger than a regular toilet paper? I honestly don't know what to say. You guys just read, go through the comments and someone's gonna, somebody's gonna explain this, I'm sure, in a very scientific way. All right, now this next thing, I literally could not even believe my eyes whenever I saw that Amazon was selling this. An ancient artifact or something. I didn't, I, I had no idea. Amazon Basics sells a fountain pen. I have never seen a fountain pen in my life. I definitely didn't know that they still sold them. I thought fountain pens were like old 
ancient technology that we got rid of because it like sucked or something and it was just like why, why would you even need a fountain pen like are you trying to rewrite the declaration of independence or something like are you dressing up at night in your powdered wig pretending to like i don't know write new laws or something i'm assuming that the writing experience with this thing has got to be bad because we wouldn't have got rid of fountain pens if it, if it was good i would imagine and also, this thing was only $10. It's a hinge. My first time seeing a fountain pen in real life. Oh, actually it looks like a... There's something loose in there. Actually looks like a very elegant, nice little pen. <gasps> that looks crazy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in my life. It just looks so old. It has two ink cartridges that came with it. Maybe I gotta put one of those in there. I'm no genius. But I think you just stick this on here. So I guess now it's got ink. So it comes with three ink cartridges and the pen for 10 bucks. For like an ancient artifact, I feel like that's probably pretty good. So I have some things to compare this to. So we have the fountain pen. I just did uh, the Battle Box video, and we have a space pen, which is, I'm also gonna test thoroughly, which is supposed to be like the most amazing pen ever or something. And we have just a, just like your basic, ironically also Amazon basics, but just like some, just your basic like cheap pen. So I guess let's start off with the cheap pen and we'll work our way up to with the luxury uh, fountain pen. So let's just write hello. Hello. I'm sure a lot of you are probably surprised that I can spell that. The difference between these two, the space pen seems like it takes a lot more effort to write. Like it's got a lot of like drag. First, let's make sure. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute. Is this where this came from? People like try to shake the ink out of pens because from fountain pens. Hmm. It's very like hit or miss. Let the ink get in there or something. All right, let's try. Hello. Am I about to eat my words? Am I literally about to eat my words so bad? That's pretty good. Maybe I need a refresher. Let's just draw a line. Let's just write a sentence like, the dog ran away. Ignore my handwriting too. The dog ran Why is this such a smooth, nice writing experience? Why is the why is a fountain pen actually good? It's like the ink just flows out and you just you just barely even have to like put the pen to paper. Like for instance, let me just draw a line. I'm going to try to draw just a line with the same pressure for from each pen. We'll go with the cheap one. Okay. Space pen almost nothing. You really have to push on the space pen. Fountain pen. Oh man, maybe I go slow. Maybe it's still getting broken a little bit. But you can see how much darker the line is. Just like... And then if you push... It takes such, li such a little effort. Let's write something in cursive. I don't know how to write Tyler Tube in cursive. I only know how to write my real name. I can give it a shot. I think this is how you make a T. Y L E. I don't think that's how you make a cursive R. No T. Tube. Looks right to me. <laughs> okay. 
so you can't really go fast. Oh, it can. Hmm. So it seems like the fountain pen is like really good for like just slow, like precise writing. Subscribe. Yeah, this, like, the space pen, it feels like you're doing a whole workout just to write one word versus a fountain pen or just a regular, like, cheat pen. Like, it, I can't even describe it. There's just feels like there's so much drag. Whereas this, it's just like, it's like it just flows. I'm assuming that where the, I just put the ink in there and it's, like, brand new, that maybe it'll get, like, kind of worn in over time. And probably be even better than it is now. I'm literally eating my words about the fountain pen. It's not trash and it's not outdated. <laughs> if you if you want a good writing experience, like I said, these fountain pens from Amazon Basics are only ten bucks. I think it's worth the gamble to see if you'll like it or not. Ten bucks is I don't feel like it's a lot to spend on something like this, and it's pretty cool. That honestly blows my mind. You learn something new every day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.